Okay, so today we will talk about the form 1 to form 3 topic. Okay guys, bab-bab tingkatan 1 sampai tingkatan 3. Actually form 2 lah, tingkatan 1 we already cover like yesterday. Yesterday class kita dah cover bab-bab tingkatan 1. So today is form 2 chapter 6 sampai form 3. So hopefully we can finish lah. Okay, so your first chapter today. Okay, so we're going to talk on this topic. Okay, guys, Form 2, Chapter 6, Tingkatan 2, Bab 6. We are going to learn on 3D geometry shape, bentuk geometry 3 dimensi. So this topic, right, what you all must know is all the basic formula. Humus, humus, asas to count your volume and surface area. Kamu kena tahu dua-dua ni. Luas permukaan and isi padu. If you can count these two, you master the topic already. Okay, so example of shape that you all must know, famous is prism. So can anyone tell me this kind of prism, what is the specific name? Apa nama specific kita bagi untuk prisma jenis macam ni? Siapa boleh bagi tahu? What's the specific name for this kind of prism? What do we call it? Anyone? Can try? What's the specific name? Uh, the name of this prism. Apa nama dia? Yes, correct. Uh, right. Hey, wait, wait, wait. This one we call it as rectangular base prism. Okay. Prisma segi empat. Okay. Prisma segi prisma tapak segi empat. Okay. Uh, rectangular base prism because you can see over here tapak prisma tu adalah bentuk segi empat. If right prism, it should be upright. Hello, good evening. Okay. So prisma tegak they should look this upright. Okay, this one is lying flat. Okay, prisma tegak must be this way. Can you see the difference? Okay, prisma tegak macam ni, straight. Okay, right prism. This one is rectangular base prism. Okay, or prisma tegak, we can also call it as triangular base prism. Okay, prisma tapak segi tiga. Why prisma tapak segi tiga? Because if the prism is upright, what is the base of the prism, guys? Can you tell me? If I put this prism upright, what will be the base shape? Apa bentuk kat tapak kalau prisma ni ditegakkan? Macam mana bentuk dia kat bawah? What shape will you get? You have to bayangkan a bit lah. Yes, you will get segi tiga. Triangle. If you put this prism up to stand, ah uh, yeah, you get triangle. That's why it's called triangular base prism. Prisma tapak segi tiga. Okay, or you can call it right angle prism also lah, if not mistaken. Hey, sorry, right prism, not right angle. Right prism. Okay guys, so the formula is, so macam mana kamu dapat rumus luas permukaan? How can you count the surface area for this kind of shape? Basically what you must do is, you must draw the bentangan. I think you all learned this right, bentangan. In English it's called net, the net surface. Okay, bentangan. So why is bentangan so important? Mengapa bentangan tu sangat penting? Because it can tell us what shape made up the solid. Apa bentuk-bentuk asas yang membentuk pepejal tu? Okay, so example here you can see there is two triangle. Dua segi tiga, three segi empat, three rectangle. Can you guys see it? Usually right guys, bentangan, paper one, kertas satu, got some question asked on this. Ada soalan percubaan tanya. Trial question got asked, what is the net or bentangan? They'll give you a shape then you must know apa bentangan dia. So you must remember. Okay, or you can understand lah from the shape itself. Kamu faham. Bentangan means what guys? Kamu bentangkan. You open up the shape. This is how we get this one. Okay, kamu cuba bayangkan kamu buka prisma ni. You open up the prism. What you get? Kamu dapat bentuk ni. Okay, maksudnya kamu keluarkan semua sisi. Kiri, kanan, atas, bawah, everything. Take out all the side. Then you should get the bentangan like that. Can you guys imagine uh, everyone here? Any problem? Macam mana bayangkan ni? Anything? Any question? Nana? Okay, so I go on. Nana, okay, good. So, surface area, basically you just count based on the bentangan lah. Kamu ada dua segi tiga, two triangles and three rectangles. Okay, tiga segi empat. Okay, for example, this one you can see here. 
the segi tiga. Can anyone tell me if you refer to this diagram? Segi tiga tu jenis dia apa? What is the type of triangle shown in this diagram? Yes, equilateral. Okay, segi tiga sama sisi. Why? Because, can you see the labeling? Tiga sisi sama. Okay, the label will be like this. This is called equilateral triangle. Maksudnya, the loss for both of the triangle is the same. Same area because both are equilateral. Okay, guys? So then, isi padu, how to get volume? Okay, this is an important concept. Like to test one. Suka tanya. Volume is actually area times height. Remember, isi padu sama dengan luas kali tinggi. Why I say that? You can see over here. If you refer to this diagram back. Can anyone tell me? Apa bentuk kelatan rentas bagi uh, pepejal ini? What is the shape of the cross section for this solid? Can anyone tell? If you understand cross section lah, kalau kamu faham perkataan kelatan rentas. Yes, it's a triangle. This is the cross section. Okay, what is cross section? Apa tu kelatan rentas? Which means that if you potong the solid anywhere, you cut it anywhere, you will get this shape. Try to imagine and see. Kalau kamu potong pepejal ni mana-mana pun, kamu akan dapat bentuk segitiga ni. This is what we call as cross section. Kelatan rentas. That is why the formula is luas kelatan rentas. Cross section area. Tinggi is what guys? How you get the tinggi? Tinggi basically is this length. Berapa panjang? How long is it? Okay? Because one area kamu tolak sampai ke belakang. Simple to understand. Saya suruh kamu lukis Uh, dongakan sisi uh, Sorry, sorry Dongakan hadapan Front elevation Guys, what is the shape of your front elevation? Pelan dan dongakan Apa dongakan hadapan yang kamu akan lukis For this shape What is the shape? Apa bentuk dia? Anyone tell? Yes, segi tiga Okay, you will get segi tiga Okay, that is why This is the cross section Luas kelatan rentas Okay, the height Macam mana dapat tinggi? Is this one, the length. Berapa jauh kamu tolak segi tiga tu dari depan ke belakang? How far you push this triangle from the front to the back is the height. So height times that triangle area itself, you get the volume. Okay, tinggi tu darab dengan luas segi tiga tu saja kamu dapat isi padu. Can you guys understand? Everyone here? Boleh faham? So this is how it come out lah for volume. Another method you all can use. Kalau kamu suka nak fikir, guys, if luas, apa unit dia? What is the unit for area? Can anyone tell? Unit, ah? Huh? What will be the unit? Anyone? Kalau kita bincang pasal luas, what is the unit we write? Anyone? Luas, guys. Area. Yes, boleh. CM square, meter square, anything lah you like. Okay, let's say I use meter square lah. Okay, so guys, what is the unit for height? Apa unit bagi tinggi? Yeah, CM or meter lah kan. So now they say it's times. Darab. So guys, meter kuasa dua kali meter. What do you get? Hukum index. What will be your answer? M square times M. Yes, M cube. What does M cube represent, guys? Apa kuantiti yang diwakili oleh M kuasa 3? Isi padu. So, this is the relationship lah. Ini adalah hubungan dia. M square kali M, kamu dapat M cube. Jadi, kalau kamu buntu, you don't have any idea how to find the volume of this. Kamu cuba ingat balik konsep ini. Luas kali tinggi sama dengan isi padu. But you must make sure kamu kena pastikan luas tu adalah kelatan rentak. The area must be cross-section. If not cross-section, cannot apply this formula. Okay, soalan akan bagi tahu yang mana tu kelatan rentas. Question always will say one. A, B, C, D is a cross-section of the prism. Mereka akan cakap macam tu. Okay, so understand lah, this is your first shape. Quite okay lah this one. Shouldn't be a problem for Prisma. Okay, never mind. I proceed to the next one lah. Okay, so now we talk about pyramid. Okay, pyramid. So now you must know the bentangan. What is the net for the pyramid? So this is the net. Okay, pyramid consists of one square 
and eh, sorry one rectangle and four triangle satu segi empat tepat dan empat segi tiga okay so actually pyramid do you guys realize we got two types kita ada dua jenis pyramid sebenarnya there is two types one is rectangular based pyramid pyramid tapak dia segi empat tepat what is another type guys can anyone tell satu lagi, yes. Triangular base pyramid also got. Maksudnya tapak pyramid tu segi tiga. Boleh berlaku. But the majority of pyramid is this one. Guys, do you still remember pyramid in Egypt? Kalau kamu nak ingat bentuk tu, kamu tahulah how to count the formula pyramid in Egypt. Okay. So pyramid kat Egypt tu is this one lah. Over here. Rajan ni. Okay, exactly the same. Alright, more than five sides ada ke? You mean five sides of of pyramid, is it? Is it your question? More than five sides of pyramid. Uh, more than five sides. Actually, this one, if you count the number of sides, you can, actually, it's more than five. You try to count and see. Okay? You can see it's more than five. Because triangle, satu segi tiga, guys. Berapa sisi? Can anyone tell? One triangle, how many side? Three. Three one? You can actually refer to this. Yes, you can refer to this bentangan. You count the number of side in the bentangan. It's more than five already. So that's why pyramid more than five lah. Okay? Understand lah? So everything, every single info, apa-apa info kamu boleh dapat dari bentangan. That's why drawing the net is very important. Okay? You can analyze a lot of things. Area, volume also can. Okay, so now how to count the surface area? So you see you've got four triangle, right? Empat, jadi empat kali luas segi tiga lah. We assume that all the triangle is the same area. Setiap segi tiga tu, uh, apa, luas dia sama. Okay, kalau tak kita tak boleh kira macam ni. Okay, and then uh, base. Base is a rectangle. Tapak tu segi empat tepat. So how you count surface area for rectangle? Length times width. Panjang kali lebar. So this is how the formula comes from. Lah. You can get like this. Okay guys? Are you clear? So I think this one should be no problem also. Lah. Okay, for surface area. Refer to the bentangan always. Okay, so now I want to ask you guys. For the volume. Guys, can we use cross section over here? Adakah kita boleh guna konsep kelatan rentas untuk kira isi padu yang ni? Samo, others, can you try? Yes or no? Yang lain, what do you all say? Can we use? Yes, cannot. Okay, mengapa tak boleh? Because there is no cross section here. Dia tak ada kelatan rentas. Sebab kamu potong bahagian yang berbeza, kamu akan dapat bentuk berbeza. You cut the pyramid anywhere, you will get different shape one. It won't be the same shape. That is why we cannot use cross section. <laughs> I believe it, Haida. Guys, in SPM, remember, uh, you cannot tiwu or cheat. I hope you all are not the tiwu or cheating gang. Lah. You all must be confident with your own answer. Kamu kena yakin dengan jawapan kamu. Be confident with your opinion. Okay? So now, how to count Isipadu pyramid? Okay, so the formula is 1 over 3 base times height. Okay, luas tapak maksudnya luas segi empat lah is the area of the rectangle. Okay, height, how you get the height guys for the pyramid? Can anyone tell me? Macam mana kira ketinggian untuk pyramid yang ni? Which one? Uh, wait, wait, let me see. Ya. Actually, no need. They will give you directly the ketinggian. Soalan akan beri terus, you know. You no need to use Pythagoras. Yeah, yeah, God. So actually, no need to memorize, but I making you understand lah how it come from. So this is actually the height. Dari vertex kat atas, the on top vertex until the base tapak. That is your height. Okay, not any other. Huh? This is not height. Wrong. This one also is not height. Wrong. This one also is not height. Okay, every single side is different. Panjang dia berbeza. Only the center one is the height. Okay, so you must remember that one lah. Ah, okay. Okay, guys. So, are you clear? Any question on pyramid? Apa-apa soalan? Any sudden question that come to your mind? Okay, nah, nah. So, I continue. Next one. Okay, cylinder. Very simple. 
Okay, cylinder one of the most simple one. Guys, how to draw bentangan for cylinder is your divide sign. Remember, symbol bahagi is the bentangan for cylinder. Okay, it's exactly like that. Why you get this, guys? Can anyone tell me? How you get a rectangle suddenly? Macam mana segi empat tepat tu datang? Because what I can see is two circle, dua bulatan, and suddenly a curved surface. So how how you get rectangle? Macam mana tiba-tiba muncul segi empat tepat? Can anyone tell? How you get a rectangle suddenly in your net? Yes, correct. It's actually folded. When you form a 3D shape, it is curved. Dia adalah lengkung. Jadi, bila kamu nak buka dia, when you open it, it will come a rectangle. Okay, cylinder is folded. Dia berlipat. Jadi, bila buka and press down, kamu mampatkan, you will get a rectangle. So, this is why the net is a rectangle. Okay, and how to understand the formula here? Macam mana kamu hafal yang ni? Very simple. Guys, circle formula is what? Can you all tell me area, luas bulatan? Anyone? Yes, pi r square. How many circle you have here? Two. Kamu ada dua bulatan. Jadi dua pi r square lah. Ataupun dua pi j square. Okay, and then for this part. Yang ni adalah rumus untuk luas permukaan lengkung. Curved surface area. Remember guys, sometimes they will ask you what is the curved surface area. Ini adalah rumus dia. 2 pi r h. Okay, 2 pi j kali h. Okay, guys, I make you all understand this. Yes, very simple. Haida, I tell tell already. 2 pi r. Do you guys remember what is the formula? Dia adalah rumus untuk lilitan bulatan. Circumference of circle is 2 pi r. So then where you get the h? Macam mana h ni datang? H is the height of the cylinder. That's why 2 pi r h. Do you guys get it? So this is how kita boleh terbitkan rumus uh, luas permukaan silinder. This is how we derive it. Okay, 2 pi r, circumference, height. How high is the circumference? Berapa tinggi dia? Okay. So then volume, also simple. Guys, can I ask you? Can we use cross section over here? Boleh tak kita guna keratan rentas untuk kira isi padu kat sini? Yes or no? Anyone? Can use or not? Can we use the concept of cross section to count the volume? No. Huh? Cannot. Wait, wait. Okay, now you talk. I forgot to open. Can tell again, huh? So guys, can you use cross section or not? Everyone here. Untuk bentuk ni, boleh tak kita guna konsep keratan rentas? Eh, why no? Can. You can use cross section. Why is your voice muffled? Oh, okay. Then I need to wear the earphone. Wait now, guys. I think that's why. I hope the recording not affected a lot. Like this, can you hear my voice clearly, uh, guys? Macam ni. Now can? Yes, very okay. clear. Now I know what it is. Okay. So this one, you can actually use cross section area. Kamu boleh guna keratan rentas sebenarnya. Okay, you can use it. Because, guys, can you see what is the cross section here? Apa keratan rentas? This is a bulatan, circle. Wherever you cut the cylinder, kamana kamu potong cylinder tu, you will still get this shape. Can you guys imagine? Ah? Very simple example. My water bottle. Okay, bottle saya. Saya potong kat mana-mana. I cut my water bottle anywhere. What shape do you get, guys? You get this circle. Am I right? Kamu dapat bulatan ni balik. So, this is the concept of cross-section. This is the cross-section. Ini adalah keratan rentas. Kamu potong mana-mana pun, size dia yang ni. Lepas tu, kamu kali dengan tinggi, you times the height of this water bottle, you will know the volume of water inside. Kamu tahu isi padu air dalam ni. Can you guys see uh, the concept? Can you understand? So this is the concept lah to get this formula. Pi J square H. Alright? So this is for cylinder. Okay, and then next one yang kamu kena tahu adalah cone. Okay, cone also you must understand. Okay, so guys, do you all realize? Uh, wait. Must draw a bit nicer. 
Hmm. Okay. Something like this. Okay, guys. Can you see that cone actually come from a cylinder? Boleh tak kamu nampak cone tu datang dari sebuah cylinder? So this is the reason why the cone volume is 1 over 3 pi r square h. Okay, pi r square h sahaja yang ni, ini adalah rumus bagi silinder isi padu. So why 1 per 3 kena tambah? Because cone takes one third of the volume. Ada tiga cone kat sini untuk bentuk satu silinder. Can you guys imagine? There is three cone to form one cylinder. That is why the formula is 1 per 3 pi r square h untuk rumus cone. Okay, so this is how it comes from. And then, how to explain this? Cone ada bulatan. There is a circle. That's why pi r square. Mengapa pi js? Okay, pi js uh, basically is the curved surface. Dia adalah lengkung, permukaan lengkung. Okay, you might ask me lah, why not 2 pi r h? Guys, can anyone explain lah, why is this not put over here? Siapa boleh terangkan? Why is the formula not pi j square plus 2 pi r h? Mengapa bukan macam tu? Can anyone tell? This is understanding guys untuk kefahaman. Uh, no, no, I'm talking about the curved surface now, Haida, this one. Why is the formula not pi r square plus 2 pi r h for the cone surface area? Circle got only one lah, that's why pi j square. Okay, tapi kenapa dia tambah pi j s? Mengapa bukan tambah 2 pi rh? That's my question. Anyone can tell me. Uh? One reason only. Satu sebab. Anyone else? If don't know, say don't know. I can explain. Ah, yes. Haida got the point. Correct. It is not a rectangle. The curved surface area of the cone is not a rectangle. Okay, permukaan lengkung cone tu bukan segi empat tepat sebenarnya. You can see nicely. Because as I said, three cone make up one cylinder. Tiga cone tu bentuk satu cylinder. So now if I talk only on one cone, so it doesn't form a rectangle lah. Dia takkan bentuk segi empat tepat. So that is why kita tak boleh tambah dengan yang ni. This one is wrong. Okay, that's why we plus with pi js. Pi rs lah, in other words. Okay, s is the slant height. Panjang condong. Okay, in other words, s tu adalah hypotenuse kamu. Okay, the longest side in the cone. Hypotenuse. Okay, guys. Can you understand cone? If you go to a party, you will understand lah. Every time when you go to a friend's party, hari jadi seseorang, you wear the hat. Am I right? The hat shape is a cone. Bentuk dia macam ni lah, this one. So you understand from there. Okay, just take a party hat, then you will know already. Bentuk dia macam ni. Or simple, ice cream. Very simple, ice cream cone. Kamu boleh tahu dah. How you get all the formula. Okay, guys. Clear, huh? So I proceed next one. Sphere. Okay, sphere. This one unique a bit. Okay, so first thing you all must know, the formula for surface area of sphere is 4 pi r square. Okay, 4 pi r square. Okay, sphere, I'm talking 3D, huh, guys. All this shape is 3D, not 2D. So kamu kena bayangkan. This is all 3D. Okay, so why got the 4 in front here, guys? Can anyone tell me? Mengapa bukan pi r square sahaja? Mengapa ada 4 kat depan? Why is that number 4 in front? Can anyone explain? If you understand a sphere lah, I'm trying to find a shape here. Is there any shape? Sphere. Yes, correct? Hey, wait, wait, wait. Actually, sphere, right? It's considered one surface only, not four surface. You take a ball, satu bola. It has one surface only, not four surface. Okay. Ah, uh, so why you got the four there? Mengapa ada empat? Anyone can think, ah? Uh? If you understand the diagram, you will understand. Empat segi tiga met. Ah, uh, wait, let me think. Empat segi tiga met. Empat segi tiga met. You will get something like cone, not sphere. Anyone else want to try? Actually, very simple. Guys, you think of Earth. Okay, Bumi adalah sphere. Am I right? Earth is a sphere. Guys, how many axes of symmetry Earth will have? Can you all tell me? Berapa paksi simetri ada? 
like square bar. That's why you have the answer, lah, guys. That's why it's four pi r square. Not to south, one axis. East to west, one axis. Not west to southeast, satu lagi paksi. Not east to southwest, satu lagi paksi. That's why you got four. This is your direction, guys. Ingat balik geography, you have four axis, empat paksi. That is why the four is here. Ah, uh, that's why I say jangan hafal formula. You must understand the formula. So this is how you understand by using the direction. Okay. So this is one way lah. And then volume untuk sfera, rumus bagi isi padu sfera is actually four over three pi r cube. Okay, 4 per 3 pi r cube. This one I will say memorize lah. Because if you want to know derivation a bit harder, tak boleh nampak secara terus yang ni. Okay, so just try to memorize this lah. Only for this one. Yang lain semua kamu boleh faham. Okay, this one you memorize. Siapa dapat net surface for sphere memang dari parallel universe? Ah. Uh, actually, ah uh, yeah, yeah, correct. There is no net surface. Ah guys, very simple. Guys, kalau kamu cuba mampatkan bumi, macam mana? How do you compress earth? Saya pun tak tahu. Ah only God can compress the earth lah, no one else. Ah by then you all dead already. Kamu semua mati. That is why we don't have bentangan bagi sfera. There is no net. Okay, very simple. You try to compress the earth. Can you compress? Cannot. Okay, maybe if you compress lah, you will get a straight line. If not mistaken lah, if I try to imagine, kalau kamu mampatkan dua-dua belah, maybe you will get a straight line. So this is not considered as a net lah. Dia bukan bentangan. Okay, net must form a shape. Dia kena ada bentuk dia. So if the straight line you get, it's not a net. Okay guys, are you clear? So this is all on chapter 7 lah. Untuk bentuk-bentuk all that. Yeah, correct. True. Uh, is the surface area derived from integration? Um, let me think. Can, boleh? Yes, you can derive. Example, uh, volume of cone, isi padu cone, you can derive from integration. Boleh. Surface area also can. Okay, but now we're talking modern maths lah. I don't want to talk on that. Okay, itu add maths line cerita. Okay, may I know why some sphere <laughs> area is 3 pi r square and not 2 pi r square divided by 2 from the sphere. Semi sphere era. Eh, correct lah. It should be 2 pi r square. Eh, sorry, sorry. Pi r square divided by 2. This one is the. Uh, I wanted to talk about this only. Hemisphere. Okay, hemisphere, lah, guys. What is the surface area? Can anyone tell me? Apa luas permukaan dia? Anyone can tell me the answer? Yeah, yeah. It's called hemisphere, not semisphere. There is no such thing as semisphere. It's hemisphere. Okay. 2 pi j square. Half. Yes, half of the RV1. Correct. Okay. Um, basically, lah, if I talk hemisphere, sorry, I cannot ask. Actually, can. Lah. Can, can. I can ask surface area. You will get 2 pi r square. Correct. Okay. Jawapan dia 2 pi r square. Half of sphere. So, can anyone tell me volume? Volume untuk hemisfera dapat berapa? What will be the answer? Isi padu. This one all they can ask because kamu kena tahu what is the concept. Rumus macam ni, they won't give. So what's the volume guys? Can anyone tell? Apa isi padu? Yeah, half also. So you should get 2 over 3 pi r cube. Ini adalah rumus untuk kira isi padu hemisfera. Okay, remember the formula. If you don't want to remember, kamu ingat sfera saja. If you memorize the sphere, just divide two. You get the hemisphere. Okay, guys. Yeah, yeah. I think semi sphere is one over four for Boren's question. If you all learn music, ah, uh, now I talk music lah because I take music also. If I think hemi first, semi, demi. I don't know lah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Hemi, semi, demi, uh, then I don't know already. Something about quaver lah. Hemi, semi, demi, quaver. Kalau kat siapa-siapa belajar music, I think you all know. Hemi, semi, demi. Hemi is half. Semi, 1 over 4. Demi, 1 over 8. Uh, it multiplied by 1 over 2 always. So concept dia datang for maths lah. Uh, those who take music will understand. The concept actually for maths. 
Ah, yeah, I learned music in primary school. That's why I'm telling you all. <laughs> music plus art for form four, hey, sorry, standard four to standard six. Uh, okay, so yeah. Usually they won't ask semisphere until hemisphere only, mathematic. Okay, semisphere tada. All right. So now we talk about coordinate. Okay, this is a very important chapter. So, guys, trust me. Anyone who take M maths, kamu tahu lah, bab ni sangat penting. What bab is it, guys? Coordinate geometry. You all learn, right? Basic, come from here. Okay, this chapter important. Uh, why no? <laughs> it's not important, you know. Yeah. Oh, Saja. <laughs> okay. So, first thing you all must know is Cartesian plane. Okay, Sata Cartes. Okay, this one basic lah. You got x axis, y axis. This is what we call asalan, origin. Origin is always zero, zero in the world. Okay, kosong, kosong. All right? And then you must know how to count distance. Guys, remember this formula, very important, especially at maths. Mathematics also sangat penting. But this one given, dia diberi kehadapan. So no need to memorize lah. But you can understand. Kamu boleh faham. Okay, basically, what concept we are doing is the triangle. Okay, Pythagoras. Cara kamu nak dapat umus ni lah. This is how you can derive. Okay, by just using Pythagoras theorem. Okay, example. Guys, can anyone tell me this length is what? Apa panjang yang saya label? Tell me using the coordinate. Bagi tahu saya ungkapan dia guna dua-dua coordinate. Yes, y1 minus y2. How about this length? Apa panjang yang ni? What is this length? Yeah, x1 minus x2, correct. So guys, can you understand now how you get this formula? This is Pythagoras theorem lah. Length square plus height square, kamu dapat hypotenuse. Uh, like that lah. Uh, x1 minus x2 or x2 minus x1, don't care. You will get the same answer because they square. Apa-apa nombor negative, kamu kuasa dua, it become positive back. So no worries. Okay, x1 minus x2, x2 minus x1, anything can. As long as you apply correctly. Lah. All right. And then this formula also very important. Midpoint. Greatly used in maths. Okay. And also mod mathematics modern. Very simple. Lah. This one I no need to explain also. Okay. Midpoint basically your x coordinate. Coordinate x kamu. Kamu bagi dua lah. Then you get the x coordinate. Then y coordinate. You plus both. Divide two. You get midpoint. Okay guys. So this is chapter seven lah. That you all learn in form to sangat pendek okay all the chapter are short short one but then it's very important okay so now we come chapter eight okay guys this chapter prepare for spm section b okay section b they will ask you draw graph am i right everyone here match spm uh soalan lukis graph two actually come from this chapter okay they will ask you to draw any shape qb graph qb quadratic uh, linear takkan tanya. They won't ask you to draw a linear graph, but it will be some type of graph. Okay, sometimes you might draw this kind of graph. Have you all seen, guys, this kind of graph? Graph macam ni? Like this also, they can ask. Ah, uh, reciprocal, correct. So, they can ask any type of graph. Kamu akan plot titik dalam jadual, lepas tu lukis. Okay, this is the kind of question they can come out. Okay, one of the graph lah. Alright? So, first thing you all must know is this one. So, guys, anyone study at maths? Siapa belajar matematik tambahan, you should know this lah. All the function, semua fungsi ni. All these are the tip of your fingers already. Okay, the concept come from modern maths. Okay, so modern maths also can ask this because it's in the syllabus. Okay, so one-to-one -one function. Okay, guys, never mind. Uh, okay, they told you already. I cannot ask. Never mind. Uh, yeah, eh, this one is not SK1 lah, SMK. Guys, kamu tak belajar ni kat sekolah rendah. Only in SMK. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Wow. Okay. So, basically, apa jenis hubungan yang boleh diklasifikasikan sebagai fungsi? Uh, yes. Why? <laughs> Why suddenly? Okay. So, one-to-one -one relation, many-to-one -one relation. Okay. Both of these come under a function. So, mengapa dua-dua ni adalah fungsi, guys? Why is this board a function? If you learn at maths, you will know why lah. Basically, anything that ends with one 
Apa-apa yang akhiri dengan satu, we call this as a function. Ini adalah fungsi. Okay, it must end with one, then it is a function. Okay, if it end with many, kalau dia uh, akhiri dengan banyak, uh, bukan fungsi, non-function. Alright, so this is how we do it lah. Very simple only. So anyone confused uh, how to identify all this? Can you raise up your hand or anything? Siapa rasa confused? Tak tahu macam mana nak tengok mana satu. Or oh, everyone clear on this? Okay, basically you just follow the arrow only lah. Kamu lihat anak panah sahaja. Yeah, and Max also learn this. Form 2, you know. Tingkatan 2. Okay? So, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, can. Correct. That is the representation of function. Itu adalah perwakilan fungsi. Okay, this is one of the representation of function. So, can anyone tell me, what do we call all of this? Apa nama kita bagi yang ni? That's why I recall in for you all. <laughs> what is the name of this representation? Anyone know? Apa kaedah perwakilan fungsi ni? There is a specific name. This one, the one I showing you. All of these four example. What is the name for it? Apa nama dia? This method lah. Anyone remember? No, no, no. Not that one. Anyone else? Siapa lagi tahu? Yes, Warren. Correct. Arrow diagram. Guys, gambar raja anak panah. This is one of the method of representation of function. Can anyone name me three more? There are tiga lagi kaedah cara nak wakili fungsi. Anyone still remember? One of it is arrow diagram. Got three more. Correct. Graph. Two more. Dua lagi. Equation, very good. One more. Graph equation. Yes, Haida's one. This is what we call as ordered pairs. Okay, ordered pairs. Remember this theory. Okay, in BM, I think is pasangan berturutan. Okay, ordered pairs. All right. So, this is how we, this is the four representation lah. Empat kaida perwakilan. Graph, equation, arrow diagram, ordered pairs. You learn this in form 2. Okay, tingkatan 2, you learn this form method. Alright, but it's basically common sense lah to all of you. Okay, it's just pengetahuan am only. Okay, but one thing you all must remember about the graph lah in this method. I think they show you, let me see. Uh, ah, okay guys, you can see over here. Can you see ah guys, mereka tak lukis graph, you know. Remember when they asked about graph in this topic about the cara perwakilan fungsi, the way to represent function, don't connect the point. Jangan sambungkan. Hanya plot sahaja. Just plot the graph only. Don't draw a line. You can see over here. Okay? But when they ask you draw a graph, look this graph, then only you connect the point. Baru kamu sambungkan. If they just say plot the point, plot titik, doesn't mean you have to draw the line. Jangan lukis. Okay? Uh, yes, two, but you can understand the fact to some concept lah. Okay, pasti akan ada concept yang menyokong fakta in maths. Definitely. There is no such thing as only fact in maths. There is always a concept support the fact. Okay, maybe, of course, the concept can be difficult and simple lah. It depends. Okay, but definitely got a concept. Alright, so this is the three example lah, like what we said just now. Okay, so one thing you all must know, if anyone take NMATS, you all know this, right? Kamu ingat sekarang saya ajar matematik tambahan, tapi ini sebenarnya matematik modern. This come under modern maths form 2. Okay, you must know how to write out the function lah. Okay, so basically kamu bandingkan object and image. Image less than 1 compared to object. That's why x minus 1 lah. Uh, no worries, got many people like that also, you're not the only one. Trust me, SPM grade will two own one a lot, especially for AdMats. 38 is an easy pass for AdMats. SPM grade definitely two own one. Don't worry. Okay, and you can also try practices lah. Do practices for AdMats. Still got 20 days. A hey, zero won't pass lah. Trust me. Kosong tak boleh pass untuk AdMats. Jangan halak. Okay. Uh, is this paper two or total mark? Paper two is over 100, you know. A plus, you mean A plus, right? Uh, A star is not under our syllabus. If 25% can, uh, 
Yes, still can. I think so. Lah. Depend on how the paper comes out for you this year. It depends from year to year. Uh, A plus usually at max is uh, maybe 75 to 80. Antara Julat ni. 75 to 80, you get A plus. Not 90. Definitely not 90. No matter how the paper 90 bukan A plus. Okay, definitely. Um, yang ni saya tak berani kata This one depend how the paper come out Kalau paper tu keluar susah Maka pas lebih rendah Kalau paper tu senang Maka pas lebih tinggi Like that lah Ya, yeah, correct Wait, let me see What's the question above uh, Tak apa, and match for sure lower the grade Yeah, that's why I say to you guys Hope the paper come out hard Kamu kena Alap paper tu keluar susah because it's a easier chance for everyone to score. Semua akan score lebih bagus. All your grade will go up. Okay, if the paper come out hard, kalau paper tu datang susah, the ones who are good, the very good student, yang A plus student definitely will score lah. But the remainder, baki peratusan of the people in Malaysia won't score. So this is the problem. Okay, if you hope for the paper to be easy, kalau kamu nak yang senang, that's why I say hope for it to be hard. Okay, uh, I am bad 05. Is this the first time you join my class? Uh, we can chat on that later. Now I complete this one first, okay? You can stay back after the class. I will chat with you all on this, okay? Because now I want to finish this one, all right? So this one is the type of graph function. Lah. This one very basic. You all should know already by now. Okay, linear quadratic. One more you all must know under this chapter. Hey, sorry. Satu lagi perkara kamu kena tahu adalah graph cubic. Okay, cubic function graph. Okay, anyone remember the shape for cubic? It is something like this. Okay, this is how cubic graph is. Yes, Nick. Okay, sometimes they'll ask you to draw cubic. Okay, in this chapter. Untuk graph. Okay. Ah, they already show you here. Okay, in BM, ah, for reciprocal, is called salingan. Okay, reciprocal is salingan. So this is how you will get it for reciprocal. Okay, so this is how you do it lah, for this one. Okay, guys, clear on chapter... What chapter is this? Ah? Chapter 8. Chapter 9, chapter 10, not covered because bug me akan gabung dengan form 4, form 5. So that's why they don't include here. We will learn it in form 4, form 5. Okay, guys, clear. Huh? So we go chapter 11, form 2. All right. So this one actually also gabung lah. So guys, anyone who not good in transformation here, please focus. Okay, siapa yang struggle dalam bug ni? Basic everything from here. Later, kamu belajar in your form 5. Am I right? So you must know all this basic. Okay, especially reflection, translation, rotation. Tiga basic. Okay, so anyone still don't know how to find the center of rotation? Can you all tell me? Siapa tak tahu macam mana cari pusat putaran? Okay, God already. Okay, I explain. Uh, saya guna raja ni lah, lebih senang. Okay, guys, first thing ah, you all see the message already, right? Things to bring for your maths SPM. Am I right? And one of the things you must bring is the compass, jangka lukis. Why? Because of this type of question. Okay, soalan macam ni mesti bawa. You must bring compass. Okay, so how to find center of rotation here? Okay, very simple guys. Can you all tell me, kalau putarkan macam ni, berapa darjah? How many degree? First of all. 90-90. Eh, we got negative 90. Haida, kita tak belajar sudut negative in mathematics modern. There is no such thing as negative angle in modern maths. Ah, okay lah. You very advanced, I know. Kamu sangat, sangat maju dah. Correct lah. Actually, you're right. Okay, but not necessarily right because, guys, you still remember at maths, kalau sudut pusing macam ni, is it positive or negative? If it go anti-clockwise, kalau lawan pusingan jam, it's actually positive. Kalau ikut pusingan jam sahaja negative. Okay, it go like this, is negative angle. You go like that, it's positive angle. Okay. So now, oh, okay, okay. Cannot use that concept huh, for angle. It's wrong concept. Okay, you, because you must remember, guys, sudut actually is not a vector quantity. Okay, yeah. Angle is not vector. 
Okay, so this one, can anyone tell me clockwise or anti-clockwise? Everyone here? Equal pusing anjam atau lawan? Yes, anti. Okay, but now we need to know the center. So how to know the center? Okay, I label lah. Uh, one, two, three, four. So guys, can you all tell me if you understand apa label untuk titik yang ni? What is the number for this point? Can anyone imagine and tell me? Uh, what will be the number? Apa nombor dia? Maksudnya titik yang sepadan antara objek dan image. The corresponding points between object and image. So what is the number I should put? Anyone? No, no, I'm not asking coordinate. Berdasarkan label ni, semua label ni, what will be the number? Yes, very good. It's number one. Okay, when you rotate it, this one will come here. Okay, that is number one. All right, so you can try some more. I ask some more place. Yang ni satu. So how about this? Nombor apa saya kena letak? Cuba bayangkan kamu putarkan yang ni. Apa nombor? Dua, tiga atau empat? Yes, it's number two. Correct. Okay. When you rotate it, sisi ni adalah nombor dua. How about this one? Three or four? Okay, very good. Not confused. This one is four. This one is three. Okay, so you must imagine a bit lah. Because yang ni sangat berguna to determine the center. Okay, so how you determine the center? Kamu buat garis. You draw a line connecting satu dengan satu, dua dengan dua, something like that. Okay, so this is the two garis. So guys, what you must draw now? Apa kamu kena lukis untuk tentukan pusat putaran? What's the name we draw? We all learned this before, so in form one. Remember the topic? The drawing, drawing one? Yes, perpendicular bisector. Pembagi berserenjang. So can you see, uh, guys, the perpendicular bisector of these two will intersect at the same place. Dia adalah satu garis lurus. So that's why the center is here. Okay, guys? Boleh faham? Can you understand? When you determine the center, uh, it must be logic. Dia kena 90 darjah antara objek dan image. So example lah. Let's say, Saya katakan pusat putaran saya kat sini. Is it logic ah guys? Is this logic to be center of rotation? Because I know dua-dua pun perpendicular bisector pembagi berserenjang tu dua-dua sama macam atas-atas. Okay, it's exactly dua-dua pun atas garis sama. Okay, so is this one logic or not? Kalau saya katakan yang ni pusat putaran. Yes or no? Anyone? Is it logic if this is the center? Yeah, of course, no lah. Okay, because it is not 90 degree. Dia bukan 90 darjah. I can show you. Okay, let's say I draw lah. One to one. And then, I mind wait. I draw a bit out. Sebab sangat besar dah. Okay, you draw and see. Kamu akan tahu. Okay, you draw one to one and then like this. So guys, can you see the angle here? Boleh nampak sudut yang ni? Is it 90 degree? Adakah dia 90 darjah? Definitely no. It's an acute angle. Dia adalah sudut tius. That is why that is not the center. Kamu kena trial and error with all the points. If keempat-empat fulfill the condition 90 darjah, then that is the center. Okay, you can try with this one as they show you over here. You try to connect and see, guys. Uh, this one. Is this 90 degree? Yes, correct. Okay, kamu cuba lagi. Is this 90 degree? Yes, masih 90 darjah. Is this 90 degree? Yes, masih 90 darjah. So can you see keempat-empat titik tu masih 90 darjah. That's why 21 ini adalah pusat putaran kamu. This is the center of rotation. Okay guys, clear? For those study yang kata tak tahu cari pusat, boleh faham tak? My method. Kamu kena cuba satu per satu semua titik sepadan antara objek dan image untuk tentukan. Okay, but usually 90% of the case, dia akan silang macam ni. Okay, you will draw perpendicular bisector. Am I right? Katakan yang ni satu when you draw. This is another perpendicular bisector. So guys, what is this point? Titik ni adalah pusat putaran kamu. Center of rotation. 
okay, persilangan antara kedua-dua pembagi berselenjang. Tapi untuk soalan yang ni, pembagi berselenjang dua-dua pun atas garis yang ni. Jadi mana titik adalah pusat putaran, which will be the center. Untuk kes macam ni sahaja, you draw the lines. Kamu connect satu per satu. Tengok titik mana yang patuhi. Which point. Okay guys, clear huh? So this is how you can do it lah for center of rotation. Okay, this is the example. And then, mereka akan bagi bentuk kat kamu lah. They will give you different different shape. Okay, translation, I think no one should have problem lah. Kamu gerak sahaja. Remember, yang atas komponen X, yang bawah komponen Y. X mean you move right left, kiri kanan. Negatif tiga maksudnya bawah. Okay, Y komponen is uh, up down, atas bawah. Alright. And then, this one reflection also very simple. Kamu tentukan paksi sahaja. Okay, kira jarak. Dua kotak, dua kotak. Tiga kotak, tiga kotak. The distance must be equal. Jarak kena sama for all the points. Semua titik. Alright. And then this one. Ah, putaran lah. You must know how to know the center. Cara nak tentukan. Then should be no problem. Okay. So next we talk about isometry. Okay, these are the few terms lah you must know. Sedikit perkataan-perkataan. Okay, so guys, can you all describe to me uh, isometry? First of all, what you understand about isometry? Apa kamu faham? Can anyone tell? Characteristic, ciri-ciri. Any characteristic you all like? Anyone? Try to give your suggestion. Yes, congruent, correct. So you must know the meaning of congruent. Same shape, same size. Remember dua-dua ciri ni. Sama bentuk, sama size. So guys, can I ask you all, if I do translation, are they congruent? Adakah mereka isometri? Kalau translasi, yes. Because the shape and size don't change. How about reflection? Pantolan? Are they isometri? Yes, still isometri. Shape and size still maintain, even reflection. Okay, how about rotation, putaran? Adakah mereka isometri? Yes, shape and size don't change. How about enlargement? Pembesaran, are they isometri? No, very good. Pembesaran, size tu akan bertambah. The size will be different. So this is what you must understand lah. Only got four total, nothing else. Okay, so then you all must know about, ah, uh, yeah. Zoom on what depend on how you think lah. <laughs> okay. So next one you all must know is symmetry putaran. Okay, rotational symmetry in English. Okay, this one also come under form 2 syllabus. Okay, so how you actually determine the order. Mereka akan suruh kamu this one, order of symmetry. Have you all heard of this guys? Order of symmetry. You learn in form 2. Okay, how to determine the order? Can anyone tell lah? Macam mana kamu tahu peringkat dia berapa? Based on what? Berdasarkan apa yang ni? Do you all still remember lah? Form 2. Anyone? Don't remember? Okay, I give you clue. Four letter word. Can anyone guess? No, no, no. Not number of side. It's in Form 2. You must see your textbook. What is the word? Empat huruf sahaja. To determine the order of symmetry is based on this. Dia berdasarkan yang ni. Four letter. Yes, correct. Axis. Very good. You must see the number of axis of symmetry. Bilangan paksi symmetry equal to order of symmetry. Okay, exactly the same. So this is how you can determine. Okay, refer back to your axis. This is the keyword. Okay, so I ask you. Since you all love this bentuk a lot, okay, kamu suka bentuk yang ni. Can I ask you, how many order of symmetry this shape have? I know semua tak suka. Berapa peringkat symmetry? Yes, because you can only cut a person's heart in one way. Kamu boleh potong hati seseorang satu cara sahaja. I know some of you all will say like this. Don't tell me this is axis of symmetry, yeah, guys. I know you all use WhatsApp a lot. This emoji is very penting. Okay, but this is not axis of symmetry. Okay, even like this is not axis of symmetry. 
only one you cut in half only the heart nothing else okay so don't get influenced by all this okay satu paksi saja i know they won't ask the shape lah but let's say spm want to play with you a bit they come out the shape later they ask you how many order of symmetry the shape have satu dua tiga empat objective some people will put three why because of this one they think you can cut like this or so no such thing okay so remember the answer is only one just in case lah all right so next one you all must know is uh okay this one they told already lah it's the same thing what i explained okay so we done chapter 11 okay let me see how many more huh? okay two more only for home two can okay guys so now we're talking about measure of central tendency guys this one come under what field in maths anyone know Bidang apa dalam matematik ni? Measure of central tendency, very good. Statistics. Okay, this come under statistics field. Okay, I think you all know this very well lah. Statistics mean whatever have to do with probability, mode, mean, variance, standard deviation, permutation, combination. All of these form statistics. Okay, and of course, a lot more lah. Binomial, normal, all that. Okay, so this is one of the chapter lah. In maths, you all must know. All right. Yes, permutation and combination is statistics because it is related to probability. Okay, Pileato and Gabongan and probability is related. You can find probability from permutation and combination. Okay, so later you all will learn that lah later on. Okay, so now we see this uh, measure of central tendency. Okay, guys, mode means what? Mode very simple lah, highest frequency. Mana yang paling tinggi kekerapan, itu adalah mode. Okay, there is also another one, class mode. Okay, in English, it's called model class. Model class is the class that has the highest frequency. Kekerapan yang tertinggi, model class. Okay, they like to ask this also. Especially in your Form 5, Chapter 7. Okay, because you will have class, right? Kamu ada class data, group data. So this is model class, the highest frequency, yang paling tinggi. All right, and then median, median sangat mudah. Median come from the word middle. Hey, sorry, uh, middle, tengah-tengah. That's why we call it median. Okay, so you just have to find the value in the middle. Lah. Okay, so guys, you all learn right until form 4, form 5. So median equal to what? Can anyone tell? Median sama dengan? What relationship can you form for me? Anyone know? Ah? Median equal to? Anyone? Sama dengan? Okay, can. Correct. Jumlah kekerapan bagi dua can. Or you can say Q2 lah. Dia adalah nilai Q2 kamu. Okay, median is Q2. Remember. Alright. Untuk form 4 lah, that topic. Okay, then of course you must know the basic formula lah, rumus rumus asas to count mean, variance, or eh, sorry, mean and oh sorry, mean only. But me only talk about mean. Okay, sorry, only mean. So this is the formula lah. Okay, frequency kekerapan kali dengan data times your data divided by total frequency jumlah kekerapan. Okay, this one also given, so no need to memorize. Okay, ah now you all must know this guys. Remember, we discussed on this last time in our intensive, how to know which measure of central tendency to use. Macam mana tahu sukatan kecenderungan mana yang paling sesuai? Okay, you must depend on the situation. So guys, can you see? We use mean when there is no extreme value. Tiada nilai extreme dalam data. Kita guna mean, remember. Okay, median, we use when there is extreme value. Bila ada nilai extreme, kita guna median. So guys, does anyone know another uh, measure of central tendency where got extreme value? What do we use? Anyone remember? Kita guna satu lagi. What is the name? You all learn in form 4, chapter 8. There is one more quantity we can count that has extreme value. Anyone? Beside mean. Hey, sorry, beside median. No, no, no. Standard deviation, so consistency. Remember, guys, CCN PY hanya dia hubung kait dengan consistency saja. Nothing else. Extreme value, all we don't refer to that one. 
what about the range the way specific please yes iqr when got extreme value we use iqr remember no extreme value we use mean okay median also can use when got extreme value median and iqr okay so again mode this one very simple lah highest frequency we use mode lah nothing else uh technically yes lah but i just want to mention it also lah so that you all remember okay yeah yeah correct yeah but i just want you to remember lah iqr and median come for uh, extreme value both also can use okay not only iqr median also can all right so this one is your chapter 12 about 12 understand guys this one is the last topic huh, for form 2 chapter 13 bab terahe for your form 2 very simple simple probability kebang kalian muda this one important huh, because this topic is your foundation for your form 4 probability okay all the concept is here okay you must know all right so first thing you all exposed to is the sample space one sample very simple guys the sample space I have in my class now is 15. Okay, lima blas. You all are the sample space. Wrong sample. Okay, because that is the jumla total. Okay, so this we will represent using the letter S. S for sample space. Okay, make sure you write in the curly bracket. Okay, kena guna kurungan melengkung macam tu. Okay, or else wrong. You cannot use this bracket. S equal this one wrong. Huh? You won't get mark. Although your answer correct, must use that bracket only. All right. And then for peristiwa event, of course, you will have your own event. Lah. Example, to get odd number when you throw a dice. Okay, got three. So guys, can anyone tell me for this peristiwa, apa kebangkalian dia untuk dapat nombor ganjil? What is the probability value to get an odd number? What's the final answer? Can anyone tell? Huh? Aida, don't shock me lah. Probability to get odd number. How can be one? Don't tell me there is no even number. Yes, one over two. Okay. Satu per dua. Not satu per tiga. Huh? Total number we have is six in a dice. Enam. Tiga ganjil. So tiga per enam lah. Simple probability. Alright. So this is how we count. And then, of course, you got the complement. Pelengkap. Okay, this one also you all must understand. Complement. Complement means, uh, what to say? They are bukan element lah. It is not the element for that set. Okay, so example, A is 3. Maksudnya A prime, dia adalah nombor-nombor lain selain nombor 3. Everything else, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. Example, I can draw for you Venn diagram. So guys, if they ask you to shade A prime, suho lorek A pelengkap. You will log it over here. Am I right? So this is what you call as A prime lah. Anything saline A. So this is what we call A prime. Okay. So this is this one lah. And then of course, if you want to count kebangkalian yang melibatkan pelengkap, probability involving complement, you always use one minus answer. Okay, this concept very important. One minus. It helps a lot. Okay, untuk jimatkan masa to save your time. Guys, imagine you want to count this number. This number only five. Let's say your sample space, one sample sangat besar. Your probability will also be very high. So if you want to count one by one, kira satu per satu, base masa. That's why they come up with this formula. One minus the answer. You get pelengkap dia kebang kalian berapa. This is a simple method. Okay? So remember the formula lah. This one also given. Okay? Diberikan dalam rumus. Okay, so this is one of the example lah that we all discussed just now. This is how to get probability for uh, odd number. Okay, so maybe I add on a bit lah. Uh, can you all tell me probability to get, uh, let me think. I want to think of a good one. Mm. Probability to get a factor of six. Can you all tell me? Ah? When throwing a dice, apa kebangkalian kamu dapat faktor bagi enam bila lambung dadu? Can anyone tell the answer? Okay, wait. Ah, I still need to count. 
Okay, correct. 4 over 6. So it's 2 over 3. You must know all this lah. All the basic. Alright. So 4 over 6. Kamu boleh permudahkan 2 per 3. Because there is 4 factor of 6. 1, 2, 3, 6. Ini semua faktor lah. 6. Jadi 4. Bagi jumlah nombor 6. You get the answer. 2 over 3. Okay guys. Are you clear on all your form 2 topics? Any question? Apa-apa soalan? Now focus, huh, guys. You all here must focus. Form 3 is the major one SPM is going to focus. Trust me. A lot of topics coming from your Form 3. This one you all must focus. Okay? This last half an hour, hopefully, we complete lah, everything. Okay? This one very short. Fewer chapter. Less than 10. Okay? So first of all, index. If you take AdMatch, this one no problem lah, for you. Okay? Tak ada masalah. Everything is explained in AdMatch. But I still go through lah. This is what we call the base. A is the base. N is your index. Kuasa. Index means your power. Okay. Or in other words, they can also use the word exponent. Have you all heard of this? The power on top, let's say 2 power 3. 3 is the exponent. Okay. Because it comes from the word exponential function. Exponent. Do you all know how this exponential function look like? Macam mana fungsi exponent is something like this. Okay, this is exponential function. That's why exponent is your kuasa, the power. Alright? So then, you must know lah all of this basic. Wait na. I delete first. Okay, so basically, 7 power 5. If you do repeated multiplication... Pendaraban berulang is something like this, but no need lah. You can direct press calculator. Okay, guna calculator terus. Same for this. Okay, M2 kuasa 1. Whenever they don't write a power, tak ada kuasa, we assume it as power 1. Kuasa 1. Kena ingat. Okay, they won't write for you power 1, the question. Mereka takkan tulis. You must know. Alright? So then, next one, basic rule. Okay, this one is the multiplication rule. Okay, hukum pendaraban index. Okay, when you times 2 index, kuasa tambah, the power you add. Example, you can see over here. Kalau asas berlainan, you cannot apply this. Okay, different base tak boleh guna kaedah ni. Okay, kena sama asas. It must be the same base. Alright? And then, ah, I got one thing. Okay, we talk under this. I got one nice thing to share to you all. Okay, got one nice kebat I thought. Okay, so guys, pembahagian, remember, when you divide, kuasa will tolak. Okay, power minus. So, A power M minus N. Okay, example, this one lah, you can see. Okay, 3 power 7 divide 3, you get 3 power 6. And then this one, some more example. Okay, kuasa tolak bila bahagi, remember. Okay, so one of the example not included here, I want to share to you all. Uh, let me see. Okay, I write here. Guys. Anyone know how to prove this? Ah? Macam mana hubungan ni boleh datang? Fun fact. How do we know that 2 power 0 is 1? Macam mana we can deduce this one? How do we get it? Anyone know? Ah? I want to share something to you all. Anyone? Macam mana you get this relationship? 2 power 0 is 1. I thought 2 power kosong kena kosong, right? Why is it not this one and this one? Anyone know? Okay, I show to y'all. This is come under proving lah. 0 over 0. Eh, hey, no, no, no. We use indices. Okay? Kita guna index. Fun fact lah for y'all. Okay, example. Can y'all tell me 2 power 0 equal to what? If y'all think can see lah, cuba fikir. 2 power 0 is actually 2 power 1 divide 2 power 1. Am I right? Because 2 power 1 minus 1, you get 2 power 0. Kalau kuasa bahagi, is tolak. Am I right? You divide 2 number with same base, the power you minus. So guys, 2 divide 2, what you get? 1. So this is how you can prove it. Do you all know this? Ah? Kamu semua tahu yang ni tak? This is how we get the relation. From the indices rule, 2 power 0 equal to 1. Okay? So this is just a fun fact lah for y'all. Okay, very simple only to prove. Uh, yeah, yeah, correct lah. 
means no number means one lah. We always assume like that. Okay. So this one is another rule. Bila kuasa dala. On top there you can combine. Any power on top you can multiply. Example AM and then bracket N it become MN. Okay. How to prove it? You just put random numbers only. Kamu letak nombor saja. Then you will know why is it like that. Okay. You can try lah. 8 power 2 power 5 equal to 8 power 10. Both of it should get the same answer. Okay, jawapan sama. Okay, and then this one you must know again. So guys, can I ask you all, M, M2 mewakili apa? What does M represent on top in the power there? What will you write as? Anyone? M on top. What it come? Yes, A power M, correct. How about the N? N kat bawah ni jadi? What does N become at the bottom there? Yes. Okay, can or you can say square root N lah. K punca kuasa N like this. N A M. Okay, you must know how to convert from index form to cert form. Okay, this is one of the things you must know also lah. Actually, I met tell you all this already. All right. So then negative index, you can switch. Okay. Contoh A kuasa negatif M will become 1 over A power M. Okay, reciprocal lah. In other words, talingan. Alright? And then this one also you all must know. Maybe you all don't really apply this, but A over B kuasa negatif M is equal to B over A kuasa M. You switch the number, kamu tukar nombor tu kuasa dari negatif become positif. This is another relation you all must know. Okay, remember this. Okay? And then this one, I think you all should know lah. This one, nothing much. Okay, guys, are you clear? Chapter one, any question? Soon we will come to your favorite chapter, guys. Don't worry, plan and elevation. I know everyone here waiting for that, right? Semua nak tahu macam mana tengok plan dan dongakan. It's coming soon. Okay, so now we talk standard form. Guys, trust me, this chapter are very important, SPM. Standard form, a lot of question come. Even in section C, paper 2, they ask. Okay, give your answer in standard form. I think should be no problem because you have the calculator. Guys, do you know how to convert to standard form? Huh? Let's say I have this number. Saya nak tukar ke bentuk PIY. You press equal and then you press ENG. If you use this calculator model, tekan ENG. Actually, the answer not so accurate lah, but you can shift the decimal. Kamu pindah titik perpuluhan, you will get the right answer. Okay, it should be 8.56 times 10 power 4. Okay, ataupun 85.6 times 10 power 3. But if you remember lah, the rule is this one. A must be antara 1 sampai 9 sahaja. The value of A only is 1 to 9. Nombor 2 digit cannot in standard form. Remember, only 1 to 9. Okay? And of course, your significant figure, you all must know. I think I talked about this yesterday also. Okay? So, can you see this, guys? Take note of this one. Jangan kata 800 is 3 SF. Wrong. 1 SF. 7200 is not 4 SF. Wrong. 2 SF. Okay? Remember, the bottom two lah. The top one, very easy. Okay? And then, this is the example lah, how to convert to standard form. Contoh, contoh. Okay. So, any problem here, guys? I think should be no, right? You all just use calculator only. Should be no problem. Okay. Everything is in the calculator now. And then, significant figure, take note. Uh, take note on, let me see. Take note on these three. Kamu kena tahu yang ni. Digit kosong tak dikira sebagai angka berhenti. Zero is not significant. Only the number after the zero is significant. Remember. Okay. This one is considered three. Huh? Although got zero at the back, we count. Okay, kita kira. Not like for this one. You can see over here. Can you see this? Uh, wait. This one over here. Yang ni bukan empat angka berhenti. It's two. But this one... Ini tiga angka berhenti, bukan dua. Okay, you must remember. Because this one is decimal. Okay, perpuluhan. Perpuluhan and nombor bulat is totally different. The concept. Okay, guys. 
Remember, uh, this one, because they can ask you in paper one objective, very common. They'll ask you, give it in significant figure. You must know. Okay. And then this one, again, very common. You must round off pembundaran. Okay. I think should be no problem also, lah, this one. Two significant figure should be here. Lah. That's why 4.7. Okay. And then three significant figure. Guys, don't tell me. Ah, this one three significant figure is 0.00. .00 ah. Don't tell me this. Okay. Very wrong. Totally wrong. Okay. Because you must remember, except for decimal start from the non-zero digit. Digit bukan sifar baru kita mula kira angka berarti. Okay. So remember, this one is not the answer. All right, and then this one again very simple lah. Fifty four nine four, you stop at over here, so fifty three thousand. Okay, so this one is the last part. You must know the operations. Okay, darab, tolak, tambah, bagi, all of this. Okay, example, if you have the same power with the same base lah, asa sama, you can combine the number, become like this. Okay, an example, tolak, you see you can combine the number and then darab 10 kuasa n. Okay, this one also same. Guys, this one you apply your indices rule lah. Okay, 10 power n times 10 power m, kamu tambah kuasa bila darab. Okay, you always plus the power with the same base. Okay, this one also times lah. And then same for this. A divide B, 10 kuasa n bagi 10 kuasa m power you minus okay guys are you clear chapter two any problem chapter two now is the important part now guys from now onwards focus this one very important trust me consumer maths topic definitely come out paper two okay get ready okay this chapter important okay because they can combine with your insurance tax easily Okay, so first of all, you all must know this, simpanan and pelaburan, savings and investment, the type of account. Okay, this is savings account. Okay, savings account is basically what most of us have lah, kebanyakan kita ada. But some of us will have, uh, which one? Fixed deposit account. Okay, account simpanan tetap. So guys, you must know the property of fixed deposit. Interest rate always higher than savings. Kada untuk simpanan tetap lebih tinggi daripada simpanan. Remember. Okay. And there is a period. Okay. For fixed deposit. Guys, if you see your parents put into fixed deposit, do they direct take out the money? Adakah mereka terus ambil duit keluar? If they put in FD? No, right? They will keep for some time. They ada tempo dia. Compared to savings, you can cash out the money anytime you like. Bila kamu nak ambil keluar, kamu ambil keluar from simpanan. But FD, not like that. The money you put in will gather interest. Jumlah bertambah a lot. Then you take it out. Uh, so actually FD, jumlah wang kat akhir will be higher than account simpanan because of the high interest rate. Kada faida yang tinggi. This faida is good one now guys. Good interest. You must remember, faida got good interest and bad interest. This is the good interest. Your money will increase. Okay. And then this one, last one. Guys, I want to ask here. Lah. Anyone have this? Ah? Anyone here got current account? Ah? Because I want to be the first one to come to you right now. Siapa kat sini ada account semasa? Tolong bagi tau. I want to come to you right now. <laughs> no one, ah? No one got current account? Okay, very good. You all still very good lah. Okay, current account only for businessmen. Okay, uh, orang yang buat business perniagaan besar will have current account. We use check. Okay, maybe like celebrity also maybe got current account lah, I think usually because they receive money in terms of check, not physical. Okay, they will give check. All right, so current account is for that lah. All right, and then type of investment uh, shares saham okay you must remember and also uh what is this property okay house land asset lah basically okay and all of this amana saham this is the company lah okay shares company amana saham okay guys any question uh, on this first part that you want to ask 
Savings with interest can also be considered. Yeah, can. Correct. Savings is an investment. Yeah. So guys, remember, this is your famous formula lah, also given. You will use this a lot. Paper 2 also. Kertas 2. I equals PRT. Remember the formula. P, principal amount. R, your faeda, kada. T, your time. Okay, remember to use the formula. All right? And then, compound interest, you all should know also. Make sure you guys know how to count the N value. Nilai N, you must count correctly, or else very difficult. Okay, so I test you all. Huh? Compounded yearly. What is your N value? Apa nilai N? Kalau di compound tahunan. What's the answer? Yes, very good. One. Because 12, kamu bahagi dengan 12. You get N is 1. How about compounded every six months what is your n guys apa nilai n kalau di compound setiap enam bulan yes two twelve divide six you get two tricky one now careful compounded quarterly the compound secara sukuan what is your n value careful lah this one Samo. Ah, ah, you changed already. Okay, guys, remember, this A, bukan 6, antara 3 and 4 only. 6, definitely wrong. Remember, guys, compounded quarterly uh, doesn't mean 12 bahagi 4. 3 is the wrong answer. Okay, quarterly doesn't mean kamu bahagi 4. Okay, you actually bahagi 3 because N represents the number of times you compound. So, compounded quarterly, sukuan is 4 times because quarter is 4. Okay, so uh, what is it called? Uh, quarter final. Ah, uh, simple for you. Quarter is four. Quarter final. Got four matches. That's why eight people. Four. Quarterly. Sukuan. Okay, suku ahe. I think something like that lah. Okay, guys. Understand ah? So you remember all these things. Because other things sangat mudah nak gantikan. Only nilai N ni bawa masalah. Always. All right? So then you must remember, uh, memorize lah all of this basically. Guys, are you all okay to memorize this? Uh? This one must memorize because they will ask in paper one. Usually it come out, what is the risk level? Okay, and the return and the liquidity. Okay, kecairan, risiko, pulangan. Semua ni kena ingat. Bagi empat-empat jenis because they can ask anything. Okay, kalau kamu cuba fikir secara logic, you can get the answer also. Okay, example, savings. Guys, is there risiko in savings? No lah, because you save in the bank. Am I right? Where got risk? Unless the thief come and take money from your bank lah, then got risk. Okay, tapi jangan fikir macam tu. Kalau pencuri datang, ambil wang, that one all we don't count. Okay, so the risiko is zero. Okay, ada lah. And then shares, guys. Why is share risk very high? Because the share market always up and down. Ya selalu atas bawah, atas bawah. That's why the risk is high. Shares. Okay. Unit trust. Eh, wait, sorry. Uh, wait. Is this? Yeah, unit trust. Correct. Amana saham. Very low risk. Okay. Remember, unit trust. What if the bank bankrupt? Extreme case, that one. Guys, all of this, ah, talk under normal condition. Situasi biasa, remember. Not under extreme case. Like bank bankrupt come inside the bank all this we don't consider yeah generally okay if extreme case happen then all of this is wrong lah. okay so for spm purpose remember this all right and then real estate the risk is low okay usually correct lah. real estate rumah terrace the risk will be low usually unless economic situation in the country poor lah. Okay, kalau situasi ekonomi dalam negara sangat tak bagus, then this one, the risiko might change lah. Okay, and then return. Savings, the return is low. Okay, depends where you save actually. If you save in FD, account uh, simpanan kota, your return actually high because interest rate high. Okay, but this one, I think they talk for the normal account lah, normal saving account. That's why tak pulangan wenda. And then shares, your return is high. So guys, this concept, right, teach you a very important life lesson. The more risk you take in life, the more reward you get. Can you see uh, this, guys? 
I want to highlight the important concept here. Lagi banyak risiko kamu ambil dalam kehidupan, kamu dapat lagi untung. Trust me. Okay, but of course, you must be smart lah when you do a risk. Can you see? The higher the risk, the higher the return. This is the life concept lah. Kalau kamu brave to do a lot of things, you will get a lot of benefit in life. Okay, but of course, do things smartly lah. Buat secara pintar. Calculated risk. This is what we call. You must nilai what is the risk, then you do it. Uh, so this is the example lah. How people strike jackpot. Uh, all of those who ambil nombor nombor in the kedai, this is the concept we use lah. You take a risk, you get the benefit lah. But make sure it's correct lah. Gambling, uh, example lah, come under here. All right. So next one, you all must know liquid. Hey, sorry, not yet. So guys, you need trust. Moderate. Return is moderate lah. Okay. And then for real estate, the return is high. Okay. Of course lah, real estate sangat uh, mahal kan. It's quite expensive. That's why the return is high. Okay. And then liquidity. Guys, what is liquidity? How easy the money can be cash out. Betapa mudah dia boleh tukar ke wang. So savings, of course, high lah. You can cash out easily. And then shares, moderate. Okay, tak sangat mudah, tak sangat susah. Amanah saham, unit trust is one of the things very easy to cash out, remember. Okay, unit trust. And then real estate, unless you are a millionaire, kalau kamu jutawan, then high lah. Untuk orang biasa-biasa, the liquidity is low. All right? So can you understand, guys? Chapter 3, boleh faham? This is all you must know. Oh, sorry, sorry. Got one more thing here. I just skipped it. Okay, this one very important. This part. Total repayment formula, please remember. Got come out in trial early. Section C, paper 2. Okay, you must know this formula. Balik, bayaran balik pinjaman. A equals P plus PLP. Given in the formula list. Okay, how is that risk in when? Um, depends lah. If the person don't stay in the house, if he suddenly abandon the house, then how you get the rent? Uh, that is the risk lah. Or maybe economic situation can influence also. Keadaan economy. Location. Location also will influence how much rent you get. Okay, a lot of factor. All right. So this is example lah, total repayment. Very easy to use. P principle, al faida, T is your time. Okay, then you can apply the formula. Okay, and then this one, you must know also, this one actually come in objective, advantage and disadvantage of credit card. Okay, guys, I think you all know this, right? All of you here, kamu semua tahu yang ni. Okay, advantage is maybe... You don't need to bring so much money. Tak perlu bawa banyak wang. Disadvantage, you will spend overspending. Okay, tabiat berbelanja berlebihan. Okay, guys. So, are you clear? Chapter 3. Any question? Clear, huh? Okay, chapter 4. This one very fast. Sangat mudah. Okay, scale drawing. Very important also. Especially objective. They like. Uh, no need, no need. Rarely ask. I never see in any trial 2023 also. But if you want to study, you can go to lah. That's why you see they never include in the notes. Means not so important. Tak penting sangat. All of the things in the note here, guys, is the important one for your SPM this year. Okay, so if you go through these notes, very simple. Uh, yes, got. But the calculation, a bit complex and long. So if you want to see, you can see lah. I don't want to explain that one because... I never see it come out also, even once. Satu kali pun tak ada. Okay, but it doesn't mean it has no chance lah to come out. Still got chance to come, but very low. Okay. Oh, God. Ah. Okay, then I will try to see. Slango trial. Eh, I think I discussed. Oh, 2021. I mean 2023, guys. You must focus for SPM on all 2023 trial because... 2023 is the predicted one for your SPM, not the previous one. All focus on now only because this is the question that they jangka. Yeah, if you do 2022 one, it's the question that they jangka for 2022 SPM, not for 2023 SPM. 2023 SPM jangka all come from the trial of this year only. That's why I don't discuss all those states because 
only this year one because most likely the question will come from here not from the previous one okay usually that's the concept lah majority all right so next one you all must know is scale drawing okay guys scale drawing very simple also lah lukisan berskala so you must remember what's the formula for scale scale these are not scale factor guys this one is just scale okay this one is not factor scala remember different okay scale is length of the scale drawing divided by the length of the actual object Okay, this one. Lukisan over objects of Bernard. This is how you get the scale. Okay, and remember, uh, guys, scale is written in the form of 1 to n. Remember, it's not directly n. Sometimes question will trick you. They will say, Chari nila n. Find the n value. But over here, let's say, lah, your answer is 8 over 5. Jawapan kamu 8 per 5. So can I ask you guys, adakah n 8 per 5? Is the n value itself 8 over 5? Everyone here? Yes or no? Is n equal to 8 over 5? Yes, no. Remember, the scale always come as 1 over n equal to 8 over 5. So n is 5 over 8. Remember, they will trick you 1. Okay? They will have both of these options. Dua dua akan ada. So if you choose the wrong one, gone lah. Okay? So make sure you all know the scale. Uh, in this topic, lower form is always 1 nisbah n, not n, satu nisbah n, remember. Okay, so this one of the common mistake also lah can make. Okay, and then this the example lah guys, you can see. So don't think and see 1 over 2 means the object become the baker chill. Wrong concept lah guys. You see 1 over 2 maksudnya object datang the baker chill. You can see over here guys. Can you see the object actually come lebih besar? From object to image. Lukisan, I treat it as image lah. Okay, so I anggap me image. So can you see, uh, guys, actually the object become bigger, not smaller. Okay, walaupun nilai ni satu per dua. Okay, because you must remember, one nisbah n. Okay, so the n value itself, n to mewakili your scale factor actually. One to n will cause opposite. Sebab satu bahagi. Satu bahagi means the concept will song-sang lah. If n is 2, 1 bahagi n is 1 over 2. Can you see? That's why it's song-sang. Okay, so don't memorize. Jangan hafal satu per dua maksudnya lukisan lebih kecil dari objek. Wrong. Okay, opposite. You must see this value at the bottom. Nilai bawah is 2. Okay, guys. Remember huh, this one because a lot of questions come on this also. Paper 1. Okay, this one no need to confuse lah. No matter what, it's still one to one. Satu bagi n masih satu. Okay, this one also remember, don't confuse. Because you see nombor dua, kamu ingat jadi lebih besar. Wrong. You can see it come lebih kecil. It becomes smaller. Because it's one over two. The actual value of n lah. Sebab satu nisbah n. Always remember. Okay, guys. Are you clear? Can you understand? On chapter 4, any question? We coming to your favorite already. Plan and elevation datang already. Can I continue, guys? Very few. Only four more chapter. Then we finish already. Form 3. Empat saja lagi. Yes, object to image. Hey, wait, sorry, sorry. Image or object. When you count scale drawing, it's always your scale drawing or your image over the object. Object means the actual length. Scale drawing means the image. Okay? That's what I assume lah. Okay, map punya scale also. Yes, correct. Which art, what art factor scala? Oh, that one is different. That one come under your form 5. Transformation, remember? For enlargement, pembesaran. Not the same as this one. Don't get confused. Okay, but actually the concept is same lah. Scale factor is length of image over object, right? This one is scale drawing over object. So actually the same lah. It's about the same. Okay, but the symbol is different. Scale factor, we use symbol K. This one, we use symbol N. So remember the difference. Okay, so this one, very simple. Your favorite chapter. Again, I emphasize this is the basic to a lot of things. Three go. This chapter very important. Okay. So how you know all this? 
you always refer to your angle. Tengok mana sudut, then you know where is opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. Okay, that's how you can see it. And again, remember your soka tua. Okay, that one is important here, soka tua. All right, you can see over here lah. Okay, actually they don't use the concept here, but oh, actually got nice concept. Saya tak handsome. Okay, God also lah. Basically, this is so. This one is ka. This one is tua. So ka tua. Okay, sine opposite hypotenuse, cos adjacent hypotenuse, tangent opposite adjacent. Then you will get the answer. Okay, this one is the basic one lah. Sangat mudah, this three go, not your form five one. Okay, this one is the basic to get. So direction or quadrant tak penting over here. We don't need to know the quadrant, all that, no need. Just count the angle only using calculator. All right, this one I think nothing much lah to go to. And then this one, you must know something on... Ah, guys, remember this. Actually, this one no need to remember also. Guys, do you know how to convert degree to degree and minute? Dauja kepada dauja and minute. Let's say lah, I show you an example. You can tekan this symbol over here. Can you see this symbol? You press this one. You can convert to degree and minute. This is how you get your answer in degree and minute. Remember. Okay, use your calculator. No need to know this. Okay, because they won't ask you. All right. So remember that one. And then these triangles are guys. Guys, sometimes you all might have trouble, right? To memorize all this value. Am I right? Kamu semua tak suka. How to hafal? So please remember these two triangles. The 45, 45, 90 triangle. Dan 30, 60, 90 triangle. The ratio. This is how we get all the values in the table because they will ask you certain times like this. I know, guys, you all can press calculator, but if it come out in section B, I mean, sorry, paper two, how? Let's say mereka tanya yang ni. They ask you to solve this. How you guys do? Uh, so you must actually remember this. The value of the ratio, nilai nisba, come from the two triangle. Then you can do this one. Okay, guys, are you clear on the chapter five? Any problem? Very short only. Clear, huh? We already finishing. Okay, next one. This one also very important. Ask a lot. This chapter important because it's the circle and the angle. This is the one you see in paper one a lot. Chapter six, form three. To do the tangent. Okay, so some property you all must know lah. If the arc length is the same, panjang length of sama, the angle will be the same. First property. Second property, if you see that the starting point and the ending point, titik permulaan dan pengakhiran is the same, the angle will be the same on top, E and E. Okay, you can use this property. And then third property, if the angle is the same, kalau sudut sama, panjang length of will be sama. Actually, these two are the same thing lah. Almost the same. Number one, number three related. And this one, ah, a lot don't realize this. Guys, remember, whenever you have a triangle, satu segi tiga, diameter pass to the center. It is always a 90 degree. Remember, very important to solve your paper one. Okay, it's always 90 degree. Okay, they won't tell you, but you have to know. Mereka takkan cakap, this is a right angle triangle. No. Okay, you must know the property. And then this one also very important. Banyak guna. If the angle at the middle is 2x, angle at the corner will be x. Okay, very simple. Lah. I think you all should know also by now. Okay, and then what you must... Wow, tablet also the one to cope with me. Hey there, guys. Mm. Okay. Hey there, guys, something wrong. Hey, why can I open? Wow. Hey there, maybe I try to open with the... I try to download again. Wait there, guys, for a while. Now only it come like this. I so don't know why. Wait for a while. I think the this thing also fed up with me already, the computer. Uh, let me find the notes again. I try to open. Okay, can already. Luckily. 
Let me share back. Okay. Where is it? Okay. So one more thing you all must know is on tangent. Salah satu lagi perkara. Remember, whenever they say a line is a tangent, it's always 90 degree. Remember. Okay. This one I think you all should know also. Lah. Always ask in paper one. You will see all this keyword one. And this one also very important. Guys, you all know what is this type of shape. Ah? Apa nama bentuk ni? Anyone remember the term for it? When you have a shape inside a circle, what do we call it? Anyone? Apa nama dia? For, bulat, for bentuk inside a bulatan. <laughs> wow, very smart, ah, Aida. Cyclic quadrilateral. Quadrilateral bulatan. They will tell you in the question. Okay? If you see this diagram, you should know. The meaning is opposite angle you plus is 180. Sudut bertentangan kamu tambah is 180. Very important also. They won't tell you, but you have to know. Paper 1. Okay? There's another property. A lot of property you learn in this chapter, actually. This one also one more. I think you all know this lah. This is also cyclic quadrilateral. Okay? Quadrilateral bulatan. Ah, guys. Haida. I think this is what you asked me. Interior equals to exterior yesterday. Can you see? Exterior interior these two equal interior exterior these two equal usually it's opposite bertentangan okay the nilai will be the same value always same one okay so then uh okay this one you all must know so can you see exterior interior yeah yeah exterior Interior. The corner lah. You liat the penju, then you will know it's the exact same value. Okay, you can apply this also a lot of times. Okay. And then the next one, you must know common tangent lah. Ah, coming ready guys, your favorite chapter. Common tangent. Okay. So can you see why we call it common tangent? You can see that all the angles are the same. Semua sudut sama. Okay, it will be exactly the same. Even the length are the same. And it's 90 degree, 90 degree. Remember this one. Okay, guys. So are you clear with all the property? Chapter 6. Because now is your favorite chapter. Plan dan dongakan. Clear, guys? I know SPM tomorrow for most of you, but just a bit more only. We already going to finish. Clear, huh? Okay, hopefully you are still strong. Lah. I know it's hard. Okay, trust me. I know it's hard. Okay, but... If you can learn this, all these topics, you all okay already for SPM, 100%. Okay, so remember this topic, section B, predicted this year. Okay, nine marks at least, sembilan marka. First thing you all must be clear on, straight line is for the object that you can see. Garis solid is for the object yang kamu boleh nampak. Dotted line is for the object that is hidden. Terlindung. I know you might not understand how to see this. Okay, I understand. Sometimes I also cannot see. Okay, tapi you try your best. When it's dotted, you draw dotted. When it's straight, you draw straight. Okay, few marks, they'll minus lah if you get wrong. Okay, but make sure your overall shape, bentuk besar, the general shape is correct. The detail, detail, the solid or dotted, don't worry. Maybe you draw wrong, it's still okay. Okay, but make sure your original shape is correct. That's the most important. All right? And then you can see here, lah, this is what we call orthogonal projection. Okay, basically, guys, what do we call this? Ah? What elevation is this? If we look from the top, apa nama dia? What do we call it? Look from the top. Yes, plan. Okay? So this is basically what they're drawing here. Lah. This one you won't need to know. Won't ask in SPM. Okay, the one asked in SPM is the bottom one, this one. Can you see over here? This is the one you need to draw in SPM. And draw using actual measurement. Ukuran sebena, remember. Okay, no scale drawing, nothing. Must use actual measurement. Okay, and make sure you draw nicely lah. Okay, with your ruler. Alright, and then this is the example lah you can see over here. So guys, can you see why this line suddenly come? Mengapa ada garis macam ni? 
how suddenly you get it is because this one actually overlap with this one okay this one is a bit panjang so when it cut you actually cannot see okay kamu tak boleh nampak garis ni actually the question give you a hint also adi can you see guys kat bawah tu is dotted although this one they draw solid you should know it's dotted also because this one bagian ni will block your view from seeing the bottom one this is why we have dotted here can you guys imagine ah this one i know your imagination must be a bit good okay to understand okay because max concept here very less it's all on imagination only how you see it. okay so you must know it's dotted lah okay and then of course fine side elevation you all must know okay all of this you can see over here this is the fun dongakan depan okay this is the object this one very easy everyone can get okay because this is the cross section kelatan lintas for the solid and then side uh, maybe this one might be slightly hard but i think still okay you all can see this that's why is the answer okay you just try to compress the solid cuba mampatkan pepejal tu you can get the answer one trust me just try to compress the solid from all side then you will get the answer okay and this one the most important one remember this uh, guys don't salah over here if you put wrong place habis although your shape correct gone remember the mnemonic pfs pfs if anyone don't know what is pfs i do a promotion a bit lah for my school penang free school have you all heard of this i think everyone heard this and this school don't say to me you never heard of this school or else i don't teach you all anymore adi if you never heard of this school okay pfs follow plan one side plan one side okay angle sometimes the question will draw for you kadang-kadang soalan will bagi directly the angle sometimes they will leave it open to you you determine which method you want to use ah uh, so two way it can come out one way they give you the angle satu lagi soalan mereka tak bagi sudut okay so you pandai pandai figure out lah guys remember pfs okay for both side okay guys are you clear plan and elevation i know this is not all the question that they can ask but i'm telling you general idea only can okay, i guys everyone here and if you struggle plan elevation you try to look back in the group because i got do remember that time if you all still remember lah technique menjawab matematik do you all remember that time i got do technique menjawab kertas 1 kertas 2 for maths i put a lot of plan and elevation question inside there so if you want that file maybe you can whatsapp me lah if you lost that file because i got include a lot of plan and elevation question there maybe you can go through lah okay guys so anyone want that file you just tell me lah later on i will share back Okay, maybe I send back in the group lah. It's much easier. Okay, guys. So second last topic ah. Last topic very simple. Okay, so we will finish from three today already. Okay, guys. Who don't like this? Siapa tak suka topik ni? I know a lot don't like. But please remember this topic important. Section A, paper two can come out locus. Fun, but some people cannot imagine. Then not good lah. They will ask you one. Draw two locus. Find the point of intersection of the locus. Basic question they'll ask. Usually five mark, I think. Section A. Okay, draw, lukis dua locus, lepas tu tengok persilangan kat mana. They will give you a square. Am I right? You all seen this, right? A square, locus X, locus Y, mark the point of intersection. Ah, uh, This is the famous one. Okay, paper two. So how to draw? Basically, you must know basic lah. Okay, so a locus that bergerak from a titik tetap a fixed point you will get a circle remember guys locus is always a circle you learn in admax also how to form equation of locus this is the concept lah is a circle bulatan so the equation you get is the equation of a circle that is the equation untuk bulatan okay locus all right and then this one you must know lah perpendicular bisector i think this one no problem Okay, you just need to know how to draw perpendicular bisector. Then you can do. Okay, and then locus of a point with the same distance from two straight line. Basically, is the midpoint lah. Titik tengah antara dua garis. That will be the locus. The black color line represent where the locus is. 
Okay, dia boleh bergerak tau guys. It is a moving point. That's why we call it locus. It can keep on move one. Okay, locus come from the word locomotion. Have you all heard of this? Bio student, locomotion. You all study, right? Biology. Locus come from locomotion. Locomotion mean what? Motion, movement. Okay, this is how locus mean movement. Pergerakan. Okay, remember. All right. I think you all don't like, right, that one, I know. Must study all the bone, bone, what bone contract lah, what bone relax lah, I so don't know already now. Trust me, guys, after SPM, you won't remember all that. You ask me now the chapter, I cannot tell you anything. And you see, I get 9A+. plus. So you see, actually, knowledge don't really last long time. It lasts for that moment only. You study till SPM, then that's it. Okay, but of course, certain subject that you like, you continue on lah, the knowledge. That example for me is maths lah. It just continue. Okay. So then you must know uh, locus for tite, dua garis yang lurus yang selari. So how to know this? Basically, you draw two straight line like this. Okay. It's the same distance, equidistant. Sama jarak. So the locus is like that. The middle line is here. Okay. And then number five, you all must know this one. The last one for locus is the middle point okay pembagi okay divides it for two uh garis lurus so this is the locus okay pembagi dua sama sudut okay means these two angle is the same lah so can anyone tell me what will be this angle i think you all cannot predict lah but it's actually 30 okay because this whole thing is actually 60. okay sudut is actually 60 darja this one that's why each angle 30. Okay, then you will get the answer lah, for this one. Okay, guys, clear? Chapter 8, any problem, chapter 8? Okay, so this one is the last one, lah, chapter 9. Then we complete the whole already. So straight line. Guys, this pop, this topic, any problem? Are you all? Y equals mx plus c only. Very simple. Oh, got problem. Remember, huh? this one famous for paper 2. It will keluar one, section 8. Remember, this topic they like to ask straight line. Oh, mistake. Okay, lucky. So, how to find gradient? Kecerunan. You take the vertical distance, divide the horizontal distance. Jarak mencancang bagi, jarak mengufuk. Okay, then gradient, you all should know lah the formula. Okay, M equals y, y intercept over X intercept. And then this one, you all must know. Remember, guys, this is another formula for gradient. Don't forget. Negative y intercept over x intercept. You can count gradient like this also. Remember. Okay. So that's one more. And then this is the equation. Guys, can you all tell me uh, what form is this? Apa bentuk persamaan? Anyone remember what is this kind of equation? What do we call it? This is general form. Bentuk arm. Yes, this is the intercept form. Bentuk pintasan. So basically, A is your x intercept. B is your y intercept. This is how you can kenal pasti. First one is from gradient form. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay, you find your M, you find your C, then substitute y equals mx plus C. Okay. If you all learn at max, you know one more lah. Y minus y1 equal to mx minus mx1. But my advice is jangan guna yang tu. Only use y equals mx plus C in max. Remember guys, when you're solving this question, don't use the Nmax one. Okay, no marks. Although it's correct. All right? And then you must know some basic concept. Lah. Parallel means same gradient. And then how to find the intersection point? Macam mana cari titik persilangan antar dua garis lurus? You use kaida persamaan serentak. Simultaneous equation. You can use substitution, elimination, penggantian, penghapusan. Okay, guys. Are you clear? Oof. We complete already. Form 1 to Form 3, semua topic habis. Are you all clear, guys? Have you all revised everything that you all need to know already? Everyone here? Uh, so you all surely ready already lah for Maths SPM. Confirm. Everything we gone through already. Okay? So what can I say now? So I wish you all good luck lah for tomorrow.